Hello everyone, welcome, welcome to my craft room and to my YouTube channel. Thank you all for your lovely comments on my previous videos, they really are appreciated. So I've done a couple of snippet videos which I will get back to because I'm really enjoying those but I thought this time we'd create a card from start to finish. And what I'm going to do is start with a square piece of card which is five and a half inches square and this is Pink Frog Smooth Card 300 GSM. And I've got these circular, as you know, I use this quite frequently, as you can see. I just cut these circles out of a piece of card with an old die that I've got. I even I haven't even got any new any modern circular dies, but you can use uh, the lid of a jar, you can use a saucer that you have with your cups of tea and draw around that. It's entirely up to you. This is around about three quarter, th oh, crikey, three and a quarter inches round. Across, three and a quarter inches across there. I might get my words out in a minute. Poor thing, I can't get my words out at all. Right, and I'm going to use my grey ink tense pencil just to draw around the circle. So I'm just using my ink tense pencil. I haven't decided what imagery I'm going to use. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to, am I going to do the oxide bit first? Yes, I think I am. I'm going to use my Hickory Smoke and my Hickory Smoke Distress Oxide Ink. You can use Distress Ink, whichever you want. You could even use your pens. You don't have to use an, uh, an ink, you could use your pens as well. So I'm going to apply my Distress Oxide Ink Hickory Smoke to a non-stick, no it's not to a non-stick craft sheet, it's to an acrylic block just to save any clean up. And we'll just apply the water. So this then just becomes my, my little paint palette. And what I'm going to do is just get rid of the gremlin there, pick up the grey colour. Now, I have put an ink tense pencil on here, so that will react to the moisture as well. So we're just going to blend out the distress oxide, just blend that out. We just take a little bit more of the ink and I'm just building up the layers just with that Distress Oxide ink. So easy to use, just like you would with your watercolours or whatever. And quite easy to build up the depth because all you need to do is, you've got this here with your water on, and to build up the depth, take some of the neat colour. This water brush has got no water in. Take some of the neat colour and then you can add that right to the edge just to bring in a darker edge just to the the circle and my brush is slightly damp that is it it's not dripping in water And then to just blend that out, take some of the wet colour and then just blend some of that out with the tinted colour. There we go. It just gives us our circle. Now I'm going to clean this up, but not my acrylic block, just in case we need a little bit more of that colour. And there's no point putting it away, so I may as well leave that on the acrylic block. So what I'm going to do then is let's just give this a little dry. So I've got my heat gun all tangled up with my cable from my phone, not good. So let's give that a little bit of a dry. I'll just give this a dry. Now my husband is watching the football, so it's a perfect time 
for me to come upstairs and create a card, which is what I love to do. And when you've got moisture on your card and you've sprayed and everything, just make sure that you wipe underneath because it can be wet at times. So let's just take, I then want to take my branched heart and I want to take this like tulipesque type flower. And I'm going to just start by stamping this little flower in grey. So it's from the Branched Heart TE6, which you'll find on my website. I've then got the Morning Mist Versifying Claire, which you can also get from my website as well. I love the Morning Mist because it gives me the second generation stamping even before I've actually done anything. So it works quite nicely. So before I've actually done anything, it already gives me the second generation stamping. Now, moving too far forward, we need some copier paper. Let's grab some copier paper. It's so easy to sort of think you can skip a few steps to make it quicker. And, and there's no point because if you just want to make a nice project, you just need to take your time just to follow with all the steps. And I need to create a little aperture. Not that that's perfect. Just need to create a little aperture just so that I can stamp along, not that you can see it, along the bottom. So I've just drawn around the same circle just with pencil and I'm just going to cut on the inside of that circle just so then this will give me an aperture that I can stamp through that has got no depth to it so it isn't 300 GSM card which causes a lip little ridge we don't want that so I've got that now look at that some moisture on there and that's because my acrylic block is in the way and look there you go so let's just tear this that's because I've left my acrylic block just above there and then dragged the paper so we don't want that so let's place this over the top and then we'll start again with our gray ink so we'll take our gray ink and we're just going to add some stamping with our gray ink so just stamping that sort of tulip-esque type flower with my morning mist grey ink and I can add some second generation stamping as well and if your paper moves a little bit just move that back or you can just add some low tack tape so I'm going to ink the stamp once again just with that grey ink just bring it a little bit down and then the second generation and the grey is just nice, it just adds enough of that colour. I don't really sort of need any more. Um, so stamping it once and then I can bring it down at the second generation. You can even add a third generation just to give that a little bit of depth just gives it much needed depth first generation let's add the second generation there and then we'll add another first generation again with the gray 
just bring it down a little bit. And just adding the generations just gives it a little bit more of that detail. So there we go. Let's bring, bring this down. That's it. So we'll just leave that on the acrylic block at the moment till I decide if I'm adding any more. I'm then going to take my clematis stamp. I'm going to take the larger image. I like how everything just falls off because I've used it so much. If your stickiness goes, just wash it a little bit. You can wash it with a little bit of soapy water and it'll just, it'll have its stickiness again. So let's take a border acrylic block and just decide how I want to stamp this. Yeah, so I'm going to take that grey ink, that morning mist once again. So let's take the morning mist. And I've tidied up that many times and my craft room is still a tip because I've done that many projects. And can you see, I'm tapping quite a bit just to make sure we've got plenty of ink on our stamp. And you can just tilt that and see the shine on there. Now, do I want it that way? Mm, do I want it that way? I'm going to have it that way, like so. And just take your time just applying that and because I've got this circle cut out of paper it means that I'll get that edge to edge stamping it won't miss a little bit because I've got that thickness of card if you've got thick card and you try and stamp through it will leave a gap because it's got that little lip and that thickness of card so that's why it's better to cut them out of copier paper so if we lift this up then, it then goes right to the edge of there, which is just lovely. So we'll just bring this in now. You never get it in exactly the same place as you started with. And what I'm going to do is go back. Let's just place that there. Let me just see if I want to use the little or just stick with the. So I'm thinking of using the little clematis, which you can't see, that one here, this one here. I'm using the smaller image and I'm just going to grab another border acrylic block like I do. I just grab hundreds of acrylic blocks. Actually, let's use a small one because then it just won't get in my way as much. So I'm going to... Let me make sure I'm right at the edge. I'm going to stamp this in black ink. Because then it will be in the foreground. And I can't decide where I'm putting all my ink pads because they're just everywhere. So I'm going to sort of ink this little bit of clematis here. So I've sort of inked the flower, the bud, and a little bit down here. So I've just inked part of it, in other words. And let's just... Hmm. Let's just stamp a little bit there. So because this is in the black, it will appear in the foreground. Because the rest is stamped in the grey, which will appear in the background.
we go so it appears more in the foreground just so that you can see and then i'm going to place this back around again and then i'll take the little tulip and i'll just add a couple in the black so and just you can tilt them slightly so we'll stamp one in the black and then a second generation just there and then we'll have one more in the black now i don't want to now i'm trying to scrap another scrap of paper just so that i can place that just here and then i'm just going to have that one it's just so that i don't have the black ink anywhere that i don't want it there we go i end up with copy of paper everywhere so then we can lift this up and we've got some st uh, some imagery in the foreground and some in the background okay so then what i'm going to do <laughs> is again look for my little pencil so i've got the ink tense pencil which you saw me already use to draw around the circle so we'll take a little bit more water and we'll take our water brush take off the excess so that it's not too wet and then we'll just go around the circle just so it's a little bit darker take off the excess color and then we'll just blend that out a little bit more just so that we've got that shading just underneath I'm going to see what colours I've actually got on my desk. See if I can work with what I've got. What have I got? So Crimson Lake is quite nice. And what's this one? Scarlet Lake. Perfect. I've got a little bit of a darker colour just to add some depth. Tuscan Red. So I've sort of got a dark, medium and light. Dark medium, no oh, good grief. There we go. I have to keep them in the order. And then I'm just going to sharp this, sharpen this dark one. And then I will tell you what the colours are. Now, before I use my Prismacolor pencils, I do like to make sure the ink is dry. So I'm just going to give that a little waft. Just give that a little waft. And then there's nowhere to put the heat tool because everything just falls over. So the colours I'm using are Scarlet Lake PC923, Crimson Lake PC925 and Tuscan Red PC937. And these were already on my desk for, from previous projects. So I'm going to start with what appears as my darkest colour, which is the Tuscan Red PC937. And I'm just going to add a little bit of that dark colour just to my project. And I'm, I'm sort of pressing on very lightly. I don't want to break the fibres down of the card too soon. I can come in and add more depth as we go along. So that's my darkest colour. Then go to the medium colour and with the naked eye you can't see much difference in the colours because at the moment I'm adding the colours very lightly so there's not much depth on there at the moment. So then we'll go to the lightest colour for me which is Scarlet Lake. And again, not too much 
difference in colour. Probably have to reach for my white maybe. So then I'm going to go back to the darkest colour and I'm just going to add a little bit more depth with that darkest colour. Just to give a little bit more depth to the design. But again, I'm not pressing on so hard that I can't add other layers to that design. It's just pressing on enough, but not too much. So I'm then going to go to the medium colour. Coming into that dark colour. Now we've got oxide on there, so if you don't want to touch the colour, the oxide colour, make sure you've got some clean kitchen roll and you can just lean on there then without your hands or any moisture from your hands or arm affecting the oxides. So then I'm going to use the lightest colour and just come in with the lightest colour. And again, I'm sort of coming into the colour before just to blend those lines. So I'm just coming into the colour before just to give that a little bit of a, a blend. And there's not much... to colour so you can take you can take your time by adding the colour so then I'm going to go back let, let me just grab my have I got my white pencil down here probably not I always keep my white pencil to hand so I'm then going to go back to the darkest colour and I'm probably going to make this my last layer Just to add that darker colour. Just make it a little bit darker. Then I'll go to, I think that was the medium colour actually. So we'll just add a little bit of the dark colour because I think I picked up the medium colour by accident. And just come in with that darker colour. Does help if you're not concentrating on several things at once. Now bring in that medium colour. And just blend those two colours together. Just blend those lines out. And then I'm going to come to that lightest colour again. to blend that out and then I shall use my white pencil just to blend the edges of the last colour just to blend that out into that lighter colour So just blending those out, just to give me a nice, a nice blend. I'll then use my gel pen. And again, if you don't want to touch, you can use your copy of paper to lean on. Just to add some of the white touches to your little floral just to give it those white highlights and I do like to just add a few dots of the white it just sort of lifts that and lightens it a little bit 
So I'm then going to go just to this floral here. So I'll just add the white touches. And then I'm going to do exactly the same. I'm just going to, now this floral is tiny. So it really doesn't take much colouring before it starts to come to life. And then I'll have the medium colour. Again, just like I did before, just layering those colours. But you, you're literally touching this because it doesn't need much colour at all. But you just want to add a little touch of the colour just so that me and you know it's there. So I'm just layering the colour as I did before, just to give this floral a little bit of depth as well. Come to the lightest colour and just blend those colours together. It doesn't need as much layering, the small floral doesn't. And I'm just going to use my white pencil to just work on the edges, especially of the petals I can just see. So we'll just add, so I'm just going to add some touches of white just to all my florals and leaves etc just giving them some pops of white the pop of white just makes it, everything just works beautifully i'm then going to take did i pull that out i've got that one that one there it is I'm then going to take my little bird from New Beginnings. So let's take the little bird again. Let's move these all out of the way and maybe put the little tulipesque flower back. There we go. And we'll just take our little bird And I just want to grab my fern stamp because I liked doing this in my snippet. So I'm going to take my fern TE3 stamp. And because I liked doing this in the snippet in my previous video, I'm going to take the little fern stamp. With no ink on, I'm just going to add ink to the bird and this is a versafine clay that is well used it's not one that is super juicy you know when you first get them don't use an ink pad that you've just first bought use one of those ink pads you've been using a while and then i'm going to add a little bit of the fern just to let's just clean that ink off and it proves you pick a little bit of ink up and i'm just going to add little bit here and then what I'm going to do is just stamp my little bird here there we go and it's just a nice size this five and a half inch square card as it's a lovely lovely size I'm just giving that time just to grab hold of the card. Don't be in too much of a rush. Oh, wonderful. Look at the fern on the bird. My camera's like, are oh, you mad? There's actually, when I can see it close to me, eye, there's some fern on here, on the tail, on here and here. Just adore that just gives it some wonderful texture so we'll add a little bit of the 
ink tense pencil just to the bottom and then we'll just let's add a little bit of water there's hardly any water on there but you you really don't need much water to activate just trying to get rid of the ads here there we go so now he is grounded which is just lovely and then i'm going to use this little fern stamp take this here i've not got much room on my desk but let's push them out the way so i'm going to take my little fern stamp and i'm going to use the gray ink the versafine claire gray ink and i'm going to ink the fern with the morning mist versafine claire and I'm just going to add, stamp it once off. And then I'm just going to stamp a few sort of, so I'm going to stamp it again, stamp off the excess. And just stamp, stamp, ink the stamp, stamp it off. And just add a little bit. So ink again, stamp off the excess and just add a few of those ferns. So then I'm going to just add, she says, it might be easy with my Posca pen actually. Take my white Posca pen and I'm just going to add some little dots of the white Posca pen just, just sort of dotting that around. And then I'm going to grab, hopefully, a pen that was got these colours in. So I'm using a Posca pen. You can use a gel pen. Well, that one isn't it. I've got like a ready colour. I think that might be the one. Yeah. So I'm using my Posca pen and I've got red and dark red. Well, you couldn't get any more perfect. And then I'm just going to add a few little dots of that red. Just around there. Let's see if this does make much difference with the darker red. Actually, it does. It is a little bit darker. And I'm just sort of lightly touching that on the card. You just place them back in. So I sort of lightly, lightly touch that onto there. Not sort of too much. And then I'm just going to go back to the white just so I can add a little bit more over the top then we'll add a few little do I want to add my splatters first do you like how I stopped then um let me just think so what stamp has a I think what I'll do is grab one of my tech stamps. So I'm going to grab the text stamp from 1066 because this has got a nice little text stamp on there. You can use any text stamp that you wish, but this has just got a fine text on there. It won't overpower everything. I can just add this and then I'm going to take my morning mist ink once again and just stamp the text. And I'll just add, no we won't, we'll just knock the paper. So I'm just going to add a little bit of this fine text 
just to the background just to give me a little bit more detail just move that back again so just adding a little bit of text here and there so let's add a little bit of text there and even if you miss bits that will just add to it so we'll just place that back because i know what i'm like i'll end up looking for it for an hour place that back into my wallet then i'm going to take some Posca pen and then I'm just going to flick some of that Posca pen and then we'll <laughs> do you know that grey ink I said oh we'll just place that on one side no idea where that grey ink is now I've probably placed something which I have I've placed something straight on the top of it because I'm good like that so I'm going to take this grey ink just pick this up and I'm just going to add, I don't know whether there's enough, oh, there is, some of this grey ink. Just the design, just a few little splatters. My water brush isn't a water brush, so that'll be fine. So we'll actually clean up our acrylic box now before we place it somewhere else and place something else onto it because we're good like that just so that you can see just looks just lovely really nice it looks lovely so then I'm going to decide which sentiment I want to add on there so you've got calm breathe peace Now I think I'm just going to put a piece on there from the branched heart. And we're going to stamp this in black because then that will appear in the foreground. So I've got a little strip of card from cutting my card pieces up. We'll just Add the word piece to there. Just enough without overpowering that design. Um, let's use these scissors. So I'm just going to cut that down a little bit. You know, I'm looking at this and I'm thinking, I'm sure that's stamped in grey. Where's the bit of card again? This is why you have to make sure your ink pads, the right ink pads, are where you want them to be. But I'm sure that's stamped in grey. So let's grab that sentiment again. And it it is important because... The black will just be more in the foreground. So I'll stamp it again and we'll see. Oh yes, it was definitely stamped in grey. And that's why, you know, when I always say to you on plenty of videos, oh, I need to move the grey out of the way. That's because I always pick it up. And I'm terrible for doing it. I just want a little word. I don't want it to be too dominant. So we're just going to take our Posca pen just give to give that a little faux black mat, just sort of touching the edge with that Posca pen, that black Posca pen. Let's just clean that up. And 
and then I've now got a sort of a little bit of wording that isn't going to detract too much from my design and I'm just going to add this you can add it here so just think what you want I can add it there and it works quite nicely but if I add it here it balances with the bird so I'm going to have it there so let's just let's get this glue going again just give that a couple of seconds to grab hold before we add any shading underneath if I add this to a black mat that is five and three quarter inches square that will make all the stamping pop so we'll just add a little bit of adhesive and I often add adhesive in the center of the car just so I don't get a bubble in the center and it all just sticks down nicely just make sure that sticks down in the center and i do like to pick that up just so that i can move it slightly because i can't i never get it in bang in the right place first time but it with the black it really does just pop nicely so i'm then going to add that to a six and a half inch square card blank to give me more of a, a bigger border. I think my adhesive is running out, but I refuse to bin that until I make sure it is run out. Let's make sure our card is facing the right way. And let's just add that. There we go. And I just love how all the products just mix together. And I'm really happy with that. Really do. I love that. I love creating that just for 40 minutes. It was a pleasure. So I hope you enjoy creating it and creating your version. I love seeing your projects. So love to all. And I'll see you all soon. Bye for now.